I'm Tom Johnson, Thomas Johnson Antique Furniture Restoration in Gorm, Maine. These boxes contain two thin jewel spade chairs. The current owner's parents bought them in Denmark in 1956 or 57. They've been stored for a long time in these boxes. The idea now is to restore them and pass them on to the next generation. I haven't uh, taken them out of the boxes. I've looked in this box. That's all I've done. I wanted to take them out on, on camera. So let's see what we got. Well, the chair went right together without too much trouble. Of course, of course I studied uh, photos of these chairs, uh, of pictures online, before I attempted to assemble this. First thing you notice are dog chews, loose joints, crack in the arm here. There's a metal rod missing. Of course, I'll look in the box again. The straps have greatly deteriorated and some are missing. France and Son, Denmark. Oh wow, this chair is missing one of these metal dowels also and you can see why. We'll start by doing the most uh, you know, obvious repairs. There's a split in this pod too. I think before I start gluing things back together I'm going to repair this damage with epoxy putty. And along with this damage uh, in this arm also. I'm using a little water on the putty knife and that really smooths this out. And if you watch your time carefully, about six minutes have gone by, you can smooth it out a little bit more. You can also dip your chisel in water. A few more minutes go by and I can use a Scotch-Brite pad with a little water
It will greatly minimize the amount of sanding I have to do. I still have to do some sanding here. In the meantime, I've got chair number two laid out on this bench, ready to be re-glued, but I discovered it's got a, a major piece of wood missing here. I'm going to look through those boxes one more time, but uh, i got a feeling it's not in there, and I'll grab a piece of teak, and we'll have to patch something in. That piece was not in the box, so, uh, but I've got uh, some teak here, and I've got a piece here that I think will work nicely to patch in there. So I've drawn a pencil line where I want to cut out. I've made a uh, template guide here. It's going to guide the router. I'm not going to go all the way through, although this is very deep. I'll leave, even though there'll just be a thin piece left on this side, it'll add some strength. And it'll also keep the location of this slot, which is very important. I'm about to turn on this router, so if you're wearing headphones or uh, you may want to turn down the volume a bit. I immediately realized I screwed up with the template. I had to make a new template uh, with a place for the outer edge of the uh, router to rest. I think I've got a good surface now onto which I can glue a new piece, teak. Now back to this chair, I've got to glue up the crack in this uh, bullet thing. little tip on using sandpaper like this. The sandpaper needs to be folded over three times. Now while the glue is drying I can uh, get to sanding uh, the epoxy part. These contour sanding pads are great. Alright, that looks good for now. On to the, uh, the bullet. It looked like this uh, 
entire thing was going to be made out of putty. It's amazing to see how little putty is actually left when done sanding. I'll put a little thinner on it so you can see. All right, now back to this bench and uh, this repair. So now I can uh, prepare these pieces to get these side assemblies glued back together. Okay, now we can get uh, back to this repair. I just realized before I drilled these holes, I should have replaced this dowel. I don't know if you've noticed, but all these pieces with these screws have a dowel in there perpendicular to this grain. We know that wood has its strength along its grain. And so if you put a screw in this way, you're, these threads are essentially cutting the long grain and you're not, and so you're losing the strength that the long grain provides. But if a screw goes into wood this way, then these screw threads are interlacing with that long grain, giving it more strength. And so that's why they did that on these chairs.
warning, this is going to be loud. Okay, so now I'm going to wash these down. I'm going to use a Murphy's oil stove because it's nice and gentle. Uh, you could also use something like a Dawn dish detergent. Uh, I'll use a gray scotch bike pad and uh, we'll see what we got. Quite a bit of blackness here. Might have to try some oxalic acid too. Same routine for the second chair and the frames for the back of the seat. Yeah, I will definitely need to use an uh, oxalic acid treatment on this. This looks like rust, uh, oh, water damage from the rusted spring straps here. Okay, these have dried overnight. So I'm going to scrub them down again, uh, only this time with oxalic acid. I don't measure the uh, oxalic acid uh, precisely. I'm using this uh, eighth cup scoop. So I'm going to put about uh, six of these, 12 ounces. 12 ounces, not as a liquid measure, not weight. It's about 180 milliliters. And I'm going to add to that about four liters of uh, hot water. This is the one of the areas I'm most interested in. The oxalic's working really quickly. There's so many areas where there's all this blackness in the grain. And this is one of the areas I was most concerned about. It's starting to work right away, but you know, it can take, it can take until it dries to, to be able to see how well it works. Okay, <clears throat> I'm gonna let these dry uh, this afternoon. Uh, before the day is through, I'm going to uh, give them a good uh, rinsing off with clear water. And uh, this is the piece with such bad marks along here, and they've already come out. When working with oxalic acid, always uh, rinse everything off really well. Okay, everything's dried overnight. Now I'm going to sand. I'm just going to sand by hand uh, with 150. My goal as always is to sand as little as possible. I like to retain as much color and even defects, but there's areas of these chairs, this is an example, that just need a little more sanding. Areas like this and also areas uh, like the bottom of the feet. These edges of the armrests are really beat and they need a good sanding. But you can see right away that this arm is not solid, it's a lamination. This, this is a core wood that's much lighter. As I'm sanding I find all kinds of splits and stuff that need to be glued. In fact this whole side assembly that at first I didn't think needed to be glued, when I started sanding it quickly became apparent that it did the bottom of a seat frame.
So after repairing the split on this side, I'm preparing it to glue it up and there's a find another split on this side. Yeah, it has movement. I'll get some glue in there. And as I'm sanding, I'm just continually finding these cracks, always in the same areas of each piece, like at these ends. All I can do is just keep uh, gluing them up. So you get that crack there, another crack here, another crack down here. They all radiate out from these screws. All the legs are pretty beat up. I'm only sanding with 150, so I'm not going to sand these marks out. I will uh, fill the deeper ones, of which there's quite a few actually, uh, with wood putty, and then sand with 150. Everything's finally sanded. I'm going to apply uh, Watco Danish oil. You're going to see I'm going to brush it on. And I'm going to keep the pieces wet for a little while before I wipe them off. Okay, these have dried over the weekend. Uh, now I've got a lot of touch-ups to do. This particular side uh, probably has the most touch-ups of any assembly here. Of course, they all need the, these, these strips. This is the core wood of the lamination that makes up the arm. So all those uh, strips need to be stained. But this one has all these bite marks that got filled. I've been experimenting with my Mohawk markers and uh, I found this brown walnut light oak seems to work well. Now for all these uh, putty fill-ins, I'm also going to use a marker. These are much smaller markers, Mohawk brush tip markers, and in this case uh, I found that Honey Spice works well. Markers are great for this job. This is kind of a big area for a marker and you'll find that uh, sometimes markers can start to get dried out a bit. Uh, I keep a little container of lacquer retarder right here and I'll dip it into the lacquer retarder every now and then. And that kind of revitalizes the felt tip. This is the area that was chewed up so badly. Let that dry a bit and go over it again.
think I'll leave that alone for now. See what it looks like after another coat of oil. I've saved this biggest touch up for last, and that's, that's this new piece that I spliced into this rail. So I went ahead and oiled this piece, even the new piece of wood. I had experimented a bit with stains on a raw piece of wood and didn't like the way it was going down. So I went ahead and oiled this and I oiled a sample piece also. I was fooling around with various stains and I settled on this uh, ancient container of dye stain from Star Chemical. They're not even in business anymore. Well, I like that. That looks good. I'll go back later after these pieces of putty. Okay, now for the uh, second coat of oil. And I'm going to apply it with a uh, gray Scotch-Brite pad. Not just to help uh, smooth it out. Okay, these have dried for a couple days. I'm ready to wax them and uh, sticking with the Watco theme, I'm going to use Watco Satin Wax. I'm going to apply it with 4 aught steel wool. So after I apply it with steel wool, and I use the steel wool just to make it nice and smooth, I'm just going over it gently with a rag. I want to leave wax on the surface and then according to the directions uh, wait 10 minutes and then buff it out with a nice soft cloth. I'll probably uh, oil, uh, sorry, I'll probably wax all the pieces first and then go back and buff them. Alright, everything's buffed. Uh, now I have to continue uh, installing these new straps in the seat. I'll show you how I did it. As you can see, I've already installed two because I had to figure out how to do it. I had to brace the seat with these and even uh, still put a clamp on it. My first attempt, first couple of attempts, did not go well. I'm like, this is never going to get in there. We realized I needed to shoehorn this thing in there. An actual shoehorn was too big, but I have a carving gouge that's a larger diameter but close. I got these straps online. It was pretty easy. I measured exactly according to their directions. And when I got them, I thought, oh man, these are too short. I'll never get them in. But once I figured it out, it's not bad at all. So I just got to do this a total of uh, 28 times.
Okay, there you have it. Two thin jewel spade chairs. Uh, I wish I had the cushions for them, but they haven't been made yet. And remember, these chairs uh, were purchased by the current owner's parents in 1956 or 57. They were in rough shape. Uh, they'd been hard used. The, uh, they had a lot of dog chews. Uh, the, there was a structural repair in the back here. And of course, I refinished them. And I don't know what the original finish was exactly, but you can't go wrong with the Watco Danish oil. I have about 20 hours in this job. I use a table saw, the scroll saw, and these hand tools. If you're interested in the tools and products I use, Look at the screen, you'll see a button that says View Products, or under the description, press More. Uh, you don't have to buy dye stain to support my channel. Uh, a like, a comment, subscribing, or a share goes a long ways. Thanks for watching. Oh, and one more thing. I think they look pretty good.